Morning, Glory. Welcome to Lisa Ann Can. I'm Lisa Ann. So today we're going to make a video on making peach preserves. So if you're interested to learn how to do that, tune in and follow along. So I've washed my peaches and the next step is to peel them and half them. Okay, once you have the peach peeled, half it. I actually think it'd be easier to half it first and then peel it. Slip a spoon down and the half pops off. Scrape the inside red, not all of it, but scrape it because it does turn brown and I'm putting them in lemon juice. Let's try splitting one first and then peeling it and see if that's easier. It's definitely easier to get a grip on it and twist it. Still have to use a spoon to scoop the pit out and then peel it. When I was very young, I used to sit next to my grandmother while she peeled peaches for hours and she would slip me the peeling and let me eat it. So I do love peach peeling. So when I come to a blemished peach, as I have here, I'm gonna peel it and cut it into pieces and it'll go either into a jam or a pie filling. So you can see this is gonna take a little while. And again, I'm going to enlist the help of the children. You got the hang of it now? Okay. We've learned that the pits pop out a lot easier just using your thumb and finger. Uh, we're not bothering scraping the middle out because all the peaches are going to be face down and that's not going to show anyway and we're treating with lemon juice so they should be just fine. We need seven quarts to complete our project today. So once I measure my peaches, I'm putting them in a bowl and coating them with lemon juice to keep them from turning brown. Somehow mommy can do it funky quick. Well, baby, it's experience. I've been doing it a long, long time. Mother also has a nice knife. That is true. <laughs> Okay, we got seven quarts of halves, two heaping quarts of sliced peaches for pie, and now we'll move on to the next step. Thank you so much, girls. I'm going to begin the process of canning the peaches. Take a jar out of the canner. Fill it with the peaches placing them pit side down. Saving the smaller peaches for the top. And I do recommend wide mouth jars, else it would be very tricky. doesn't hurt to give them a little push funnel and a hot syrup. It doesn't have to be boiling. It should boil, but then turn it down to a simmer just as long as it's hot. This is a 30% sugar solution. It would be considered a light syrup. The recipe is in the bowl with the okay. leave half inch headspace. Make sure the rim is clean. The hot lid. Screw on the ring. Finger tight. Place it into the canner. 
I decided to give the peaches a turn upside down to get the air bubbles out from underneath. I've decided to use my pressure canner this time because the capacity is much larger. I will put the heat on high and the steam will start escaping out of that vent. As soon as it does, I will set a timer for 10 minutes to let the steam and the air escape out of the canner. And then I will put the weight on the vent cover. Steam has started escaping. I'm not sure if the camera can catch it. There we go. Okay, at this point, I'm going to watch the pressure gauge, and then when it gets very close to five pounds, I'll start lowering the heat. All right, we're up to five pounds. I've set my timer for 30 minutes. It's real important to keep an eye on the pressure gauge during the 30 minutes and make sure it stays at five. It may go a little above, and I'll just reduce the heat, uh, but I don't need it to go below. do at this point is turn off the heat and push it off of the hot eye. Here we are, seven quarts of peach halves. I'm gonna cover them to protect them from drafts and hopefully they'll start sealing soon. Now that we've finished preserving our peaches, let's go to the Bible and look what it has to say about the word preserved. The word preserved is found 56 times in your King James Bible and it's of course a good method to study by looking up how the word is used in the King James Bible. Back in the day you used to have a great big concordance that weighed about 20 pounds um, and you'd have to sit and read in the fine print uh, if you wanted to find a word in the Bible. Strong's concordance is a very popular one. Now all those concordances are available on your phone. All you have to do is go to the app store on your phone. They're free, just download, and away you go. Often the concordance has several versions of the Bible to choose from, which is a good tool also so that you can compare verses. Perhaps your church uses uh, NIV or ESV or one of the several hundred versions of the Bible available today, so you can do a comparison for yourself. It's helpful to see the omissions and changes that have been made in the other versions. So take the peach, for example. Um, you can make peach jam, or you can make peach preserves. So with the peach jam, you chop up the peaches and cook them and add sugar and spices. But with the peach preserves, we just cut the peaches in half and preserve them in a liquid that will keep them in their most recognizable form. You might see a jar of orange colored preserves on the shelf and not know if it's peach or marmalade or mango or chutney or who knows what but when you look in your pantry and you see a jar of half peaches you identify what they are immediately that gives us a physical clue as to what the word preserve means but let's go to scripture and take a look the 
Let's go to um, Psalm 12 and begin in verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So the words of the Lord are being compared to silver that has been tried seven times. It's completely pure. There's no impurities in it. So if you have a Bible that has any errors in it, it has impurities in it, and you can know that that's not the word of the Lord. Let's take a look in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5.18. These words are probably very familiar to most of you. It's Jesus speaking. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So you, like myself, may have heard a preacher from the pulpit say, well, this is like dotting every I and crossing every T. Um, it really isn't. I was taught that, but I was also taught a correct view. A jot and a tittle is not in the English language. It's in the Hebrew language. So that's where you have to go to get the definition for that. But I can give you an example with an English word. So if you can read this, and most of you can, even though it's not complete, that's the word just, J-U-S-T. The dot is missing and the cross is missing. Not a jot and a tittle, but a dot and a cross. So when I added the dot and the cross, the word is still the same. It did not change the word, it didn't change the definition. But in the Hebrew, when you add a jot or a tittle, that actually changes the meaning of the word. Let's look at something else Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So if you have a Bible where words have been left out, they've passed away, then you do not have an authentic, genuine copy of the words of the Lord. One last thing I'd like to take a look at is Psalm 138. Psalm 138, verse 2. And before I read it, just remark that if you're a student of the Bible, you know how highly God values his own name and the name of Jesus. So that will help you to understand the importance of this statement. Psalm 138.2 I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The Lord greatly esteems his word. God gave us his word by the Holy Spirit, and God preserves his word. Not only can you trust his word, you can trust him. We put our faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to pay for our sins, that we are forgiven of our sins, and that we're accepted in the beloved, and that we're complete in him. When we trust in him, we can have full assurance of salvation. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again soon.